Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. .1. In the comments to previous videos, people asked me to do something with SLS. They weren't very clear what I was supposed to do with SLS. They just said, do SLS. This is a bit vague, especially since I'm normally involved in redesigning things, the exception being for my rocket profiles, which I did one of SLS already, of course, a long, long time ago, back when I believe in that video and people taunted me for this, I said, that it was a to launch no later than 2018. Well, that was because that was what Congress told NASA to do. Uh, unfortunately, that didn't happen, but I don't know how much of a mistake that was necessarily. It probably should have launched before 2018. That would have been much better for it. Most recently, people found out that the RS-25s that Aerojet Rocketdyne are gonna make, uh, not the ones that are left over from, from the shuttle program, but the new ones, are going to cost more than $100 million a piece. I wasn't surprised, but apparently people were surprised. Um, I knew how much those engines cost and knew that it was definitely worth bringing them back on the shuttle every time. By the way, the cost of refurbishment, uh, we know, was uh, for the, all three engines on the back of the shuttle, $25 million per mission. So that's how much it costs to, to service the shuttle's engines. And so it was obviously worth it to bring them back. But, but SLS is not bringing them back. I, of course, have my own solution to this, which is the engine mouse. And if you don't know what the engine mouse is, it's basically the back end of the shuttle turned into a pod. And that would allow us to bring them back. It's just a, sort of a small space plane, but it doesn't really work like a space plane. It's more like a pod. I've shown it in a few videos. I wanted to make a two engine engine mouse so that we could put four engines on SLS because right now it's a three engine engine mouse. So we'd have to put six, and that's too much. But yeah, so I designed that, and I'll get the two-engine engine mouse so that we can do SLS properly, bringing the engines back, but that's for another video. I had a different idea for this video. For this video, we are going to put the tanks and engines of Starship at the bottom of SLS. Now, this has a few problems with it. Uh, first of all, you guys got to be horrified, but Obviously, we cannot bring the Starship tank back or the engines, right? They're going to get way too far into the uh, towards orbit to come back. So, oh well. Uh, I mean, it's sad. It's sad, but this would still be way cheaper than the core of SLS. So, look at it that way. And also, if uh, NASA is paying SpaceX to make a bunch of these, That'll certainly help the whole development process and, you know, the assembly line and everything if you're going to make, if you want to make a whole lot of Starship cores, this would help. So there is that. Another problem is that because we aren't using hydrogen in here, we needed more of a tank. So this is just a structural section that's 38 tons doing nothing here. And there's also this bit that's nine ton, almost nine tons that adapts to the inner uh, stage here. So that's a bit distasteful, but um, it, we really wouldn't have, actually the boosters, I don't know if they need to attach to something here, but it's probably best for the boosters if the core extends all the way up here. I'm not sure. I felt that it was necessary, but maybe it isn't. Anyway, if we don't have to carry this extra weight, that'll only be to our benefit. Of course, I've put the Block 1B version on top here, so this is the full EUS. Uh, the ICPS is would not prove as much as this would. Uh, if we launch this, then we know, well, obviously the Starship core can do the whole business. Why didn't I put Super Heavy? Well, first of all, you'd be throwing away 37 engines, so that wouldn't be good. Uh, second of all, it's way too overpowered for this situation, and actually the boosters probably wouldn't do a very good job lifting it. As it is, even this, uh, we only get off the ground with a 1.28 thrust to weight ratio, so it's really heavy, the, the Starship tank. It's really, really heavy. Uh, this is also in response to one comment that asked me to replace the space shuttle with Starship on the shuttle launch stack. And my response to that was, well, Starship's, Starship itself is heavier than both the shuttle and its external tank combined, so all you're going to have left is Starship and the two boosters, which led to this. So, so well, here we go. Uh, wish fulfilled. 
And yeah, so we have Orion and the whole business. Uh, we don't have a lander in here yet. So, heck, let's see how it does and whether it can deliver the EUS to orbit while still retaining enough fuel in the EUS to transfer Orion and the service module to the moon. So that's my minimum requirement. Okay, so here we go. It doesn't look too bad, but uh, you, you can sort of imagine what it'd be without this section. And that would look quite squat, but maybe that would be all right too, I don't know. SAS on, throttle is up. So we're igniting just the three service uh, surface uh, raptors, so ignition. We will light the vacuum ones later. I don't know about the plume going on. All right, launch. Uh, I thought I had a good plume before, but this this is a weird plume. All right, whatever. Lots of shading things going on. We'll ignite the vacuum engines just before we release the boosters. Just in case there's some problem with igniting the engines while the booster skirts are right there. So we won't uh, do it too much ahead of time. Now obviously there are many other improvements we could make to this whole thing and I'm not saying this is the optimal situation here but it's a thought. It's just a thought. For one thing I would probably replace the engines on the EUS with like BE3Us from Blue Origin. Probably two of them. That would be the equivalent of a J2 incidentally in thrust. Okay, getting close to booster separation time. Okay, vacuum engine ignition. And SRB, ooh, a little bit early on the SRB separation, but all right. Otherwise, still going. Now, the six Raptors are not like super OP at this point, as you can see. Because this is a heavier tank from the get-go. And we need the heavier tank because it's not hydrogen and oxygen, so... So we are... we don't have the same efficiency. So we probably should have gone steeper earlier, it looks like. I don't know exactly when Orion gets rid of its launch escape system. It may be okay to do it here, maybe we'd have to wait. Let's just hang on to it. I mean, again, to test the uh, capacity of this. We'll wait until we get to the EUS. Very shadowy in this direction, I guess I'll have to stick to this side. I'd like a better view of Florida, but it's so dark on that side. So the mod for the Space Launch System parts is called Space Launch System. I picked it up a long time ago. I don't think it's been updated for a long time now. I just keep using it. Um, the RO configurations were provided by the modder, or at least in that thread, so... I don't th they don't... they aren't built into realism overhaul or anything like that. Oh, I should uh, be a little bit more specific. When I said that the refurbishment of the space shuttle engines, all three of them, was 25 million per mission, that was in 2011. Uh, the administration had uh, asked what the marginal costs for an additional shuttle mission would be, and so NASA gave those figures at that time for one more shuttle mission. So that doesn't include, you know, facility costs and all that business. That's just the cost of flight. Well, we should probably throw all down, which these can, of course. So will we have enough with the EUS? How much will we have left when we get to orbit? We'll certainly get to orbit. All right, separation and throttle up. And nozzles out. These are actually uh, RL-10B2s instead of the Cs. That's because that's what this mod came with. We will probably have to pitch up. <laughs> okay, I think we can release the launch escape system safely. And somebody mentioned I released the 
the solar panel covers at the wrong time in the rocket profiles video. I have no idea when to release them, but let's release them. Mass-wise, they make no difference at this point. Well, let me check these solar panels out. I don't know how well they work, or if they work at all. I mean, you can see the animation there. That's a little bit peculiar, isn't it? And they've got two extend panels, which is... Uh, apparently, the other one allows them to rotate, uh, to track the sun. So, one extend panel, and then another extend panel to make sure it starts doing its solar panel deal. I actually place the thrusters in a way that I like, rather than the way that uh, these little RCS, uh, rather than necessarily where they want to put them. But uh, in principle, it's about the same, except I put more thrusters, I think, than they have. Just in case I want to use this for something practical. I'd like a different docking port, though. This is still not NASA docking system, but I'd like a different model of that. And I'll have to see which one I used for my... Um, Mars colonization series. Not thrilled with the Orion service module and uh, this one probably needs some configurations like for fuel cell and all and we accidentally topped off the water when we didn't need to probably. Well here we go we're gonna start going down a bit. Still there's oodles of Delta V in this stage let's see if that's correct or not. Yeah, uh, 5,000 left. Now, of course, if it was carrying a lander, it would not have quite that much. Maybe if it's if we want to put a lander in there, we should get rid of those structural parts. Again, those structural parts combined are, you know, nearly 40 tons. Or was it over 40 tons? So, we could make a good-sized lander for that. If we could shorten those up a bit. Okay, that's good enough. 194 by 188. And we have 3,580 meters per second with which to transfer to the moon, should we want to. Um, the service module for Orion, incidentally, has 1,464 meters per second, which it, it it's good enough for Orion to capture in, uh, around the moon and then return, barely. So, I mean, it's not going to do a whole lot with a lander in tow. But anyway, hey, um, let's see if we can do an off-plane transfer, I don't know. It depends on the timing. I didn't line up with the moon or anything. That's not the best thing. I don't think I have life support in here, though. I really need to get that in. So we don't have to worry about it taking an obscene amount of time. Hmm. Well, this isn't working very well. I think it's too extreme a uh, situation here. Oh no, wait, it, it was just lying to me. <laughs> okay, so it wasn't showing me the... I was going like, it, it, there ought to be an encounter there, but it wasn't showing it to me, so I was wondering like, where... So we'll do the main burn, and then we'll probably need to do a correction here. Of a little bit. And that's a pretty extreme off-plane transfer. Let's make sure how much it'll take to make orbit here. Okay, that'll do fairly nicely. That'll be too much. Unfortunately, Orion can't get into a tight orbit. So we'll have to keep it a little bit loose. But the mid-course adjustment is mild. Alright, so let's try and do this on time, maybe, hopefully. I don't really have very good RCS on here. So we'll cheat a little bit. And now, no. We'll just have the RL10s turn for us. I'll need to fix up the RCS on this bit. There's no throttling on this stage anyway. Okay, well, let's see if we can go to the moon properly. Okay, and shut down. We'll do the rest with the service module. Let's separate and get that operational. Okay, RCS, ooh, I, uh, well, this says it does not have it enable crossfeed on. Oh, okay, I was worried for a sec that we didn't have RCS, but it looks like we have RCS. That's excellent. Somebody at one point asked about 
why I went around on this side of the moon instead of the other side of the moon. So let's do some quick uh, moon capture math here. So let's make sure we're all nice and level with the moon's orbit. Okay. Okay, that's nearly 100 kilometers. We'll go with that. And so we have a correction of 23.4 meters per second. And let's see. Um, I want, I'll just go circular to see how much it costs. Okay, so that's 110 by 96. That's 192.3. Uh, then we'll go on the opposite side for an additional cost of a few meters per second. Okay, that's 100 kilometers. That's 128 by 75. That'll even out. Uh, 888. It's exactly the same if you factor in the extra amount that we did in the mid-course adjustment. So basically that's what I said. Um, it makes no difference which side of the moon you go on. Uh, the moon isn't helping either. I mean, it isn't changing how much the moon helps you get into orbit uh, by going one side or another. Uh, I mean, it helps here. I mean, so if there's any benefit to, uh, you know, maybe if you have a leftover stage like with the S4B, they just wanted to use as much fuel out of there as possible and save some fuel on the surface module, then this would save four meters per second in the service module. Uh, at that four meters per second, you'd have to pay from the S4B stage on Apollo. So, or in this case, the uh, if we had done this uh, correction with the EUS instead, then it'd be the EUS paying that price, and then we'd save some on the Orion service module. But otherwise, it makes no difference. Okay. Selling the fuel down, and we are burning. Okay, we'll take care of that when we get there this time. That's nice and close. All right, let's get to the moon. It's a bit of an awkward trajectory here, and it's taking way longer than we normally would, uh, more than 10 days. Okay, let's see the approach to the moon. Whoa, a little bit fast. All right, retrograde. Whoa, what, it got on? Oh, it's changing to the lower mode. Oh, that's really dramatic though. That might be a little bit excessive. Okay, I guess we'll start retroing. This takes a long time. It burns for 16 minutes uh, overall. This will take about 8. Okay, we have captured. But we don't have 800 to get into a tight orbit and then another 800 to break that orbit. So we'll have to keep it a little bit loose. We'll reserve at least 800 to return and we'll see what orbit we get into given that. So this at about 1500 meters per second, the Apollo service module, if it just had the command module, had 2800. Of course it was heavier by quite a lot. Well, not that much really. Orion itself is very heavy. Oh, we can keep going. It's just uh, Orion is heavier than Apollo. Well, our periaps is going a little bit low, so I'll just stop it there. Okay, well, anyway, I'm not going to bring it back in this episode. That's going to be for some other time. For now, we will leave it here, around the moon, with Earth in view. And let's take a look at the IVA view. Maybe it's a good IVA. I don't know. Let's see. Well, we've got raster prop monitor things down there, but it's really hard for me to see them. Um, a nice view out the window and everything, but... Uh, I mean, I appreciate that at least we have raster prop monitor instruments, that's hopeful, but yeah, um, the eye point could be a little bit lower. I don't know if there's a way of shifting that. Um, nope, that, not like that. Mm, control? Nope, that does the same thing. Uh, it's just, okay. Page down, page up. 
Well, no, uh, apparently not. So, anyway, that will be for another time. But, yeah, here it is. I hope this satisfies people somehow. <laughs> Alright, so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.